Okay, is the screen clear to everybody? Hello? Yeah. Yes, okay, good. And again, good afternoon to everybody and good morning to Mr. Kong. I imagine he's in Europe. Um, and thank you very much for inviting me to join this uh, uh, round table and to share my uh, presentation about the global market uh, that's an update of the global market mango situation. Uh, my uh, presentation will be will follow the, the uh, these topics. Um, a few words about the impact on the mango industry by uh, due to the COVID-19. Uh, some information about the global production in uh, 2019 and the trade at a glance in 2020. Some information about the USA market. European market for both fresh mango and processed mango products. Some information about the Chinese market. And the last one is South Korea, Japan, Emirates, and Australia markets. Final consideration, recommendation that we will share together. Um, I would say that um, last year was a horrible year for, uh, for European and uh, uh, American uh, markets. Uh, everybody suffered, and today, this year, I think that the Asian part of the planet has been more um, affected by the COVID pandemic. Uh, what happened in our country, uh, our countries was uh, the reflection of what was happening in uh, the production country, where um, uh, the disease and the contamination and the contain, uh, containment measure adopted by the government to contain and to reduce as much as possible the infections and uh, uh, disrupted the production, the harvesting, has impacted the transportation, the distribution. Uh, all activities which required labor intensively were, of course, delayed, were uh, made much more complicated because fear of the workers to, to go together and work together um, lack of transportation from the village to the place of activities, all these labor intensity were affected. Plus, uh, at the borders, at the port airports, uh, we witnessed the um, situation of delays, um, complication, uh, hesitations, and of course, lack of orientation. We, the global, uh, a pandemic affected the global attitude of, of the trade and the transportations. Uh, we saw that uh, planes stopped working with the passenger, and that was the first impact on the um, on the transportation of goods. Then the refrigerator containers, the air and sea freight rates that went up to the sky. Today, I think that the uh, Container cost rate from China to Europe is 10 times what, what was uh, just 16, 18 year, months ago. Uh, there was also an impact on the consumption because closure of schools, closure of the canteens in the companies, closure of the restaurant, closure of the hotel, they reduced the consumption of tropical fruit. Uh, the, the economies went down globally. People lost their job. There was less money uh, in the consumer pockets for high value products and tropical fruits is considered high value products. Uh, there were, and there are records uh, reporting that uh, a lot of us all tropical fruit went to the waste. So my question is, is not so easy to understand and to uh, evaluate the real consumption. Uh, there was a, a positive aspect in this uh, negative situation. Uh, consumers were more oriented towards vitamin-rich food and the attitude to consume to increase the consumption of these products, including tropical fruits, uh, partially offset the decrease of consumption, general consumption in USA and European Union. 
anyway, reading the perspective, the forecast prepared by the agencies, international agencies, uh, I think that we have to believe that the future turned positive. Uh, the demand for tropical fluid, uh, including mangoes, is in high income countries should start to grow again. And this is, in fact, is uh, the uh, forecast of different agencies, including the FAO for the production, where in 19, uh, 2019, the production was uh, increased, passing from 53.4 to 55.8 million tons. Um, all countries, exception, with the exception of Pakistan, um, witnesses a positive growth. Uh, the best performer in terms of percentage year to year was were Peru, Mexico, and Vietnam. Uh, 2020, there is a, a positive growth uh, reported by media and reported by uh, FAO in uh, their medium term outlook. The export uh, was almost stable in 2020, uh, going with a slight decline of. 0.74%, passing from 2.55 uh, million to 0.53 million tons. Uh, while the best exporters were again Mexico, Brazil, Peru, and the Netherlands. But we have to think that the Netherlands is importing and re exporting to the majority of the European markets. The import increased, passing from 2.2. 2.39 uh, million tons. The largest market, again, USA was confirmed its position as a main largest market in the, globally with uh, uh, 50, 73,000 tons. Then uh, Europe, and I will spend a few words later on on Europe uh, with four, four or 50, uh, 500,000 tons. China with uh, 3,779 tons, Hong Kong by the re-export to China, Canada and the United Arab Emirates. Again, international agencies believe in a positive growth and I think that we will adjust and we will, uh, uh, re we will come back to the previous uh, pre, uh, situation pre, uh, previous to COVID uh, pandemic. Quickly about the US market, as I said, is the largest and is confirmed to be the largest, where uh, the leading comp suppliers are still Mexico, Peru, Ecuador, Brazil, Haiti, Guatemala, and Dominican Republic. Uh, those countries are uh, Central America, South America, and basically they are uh, enjoying this um, proximity with a large uh, and constant supply. Uh, Mexico logistic advantage uh, in maximum 48 hours a truck can reach uh, any uh, supermarket in the uh, belt uh, south belt of, of uh, US uh, Mexico dedicated a large uh, area for the cultivation of uh, mango the labor cost is uh, um, in low and they achieve uh, year by year uh, a cost and quality and um, in, uh, on the production. So consumers in US are now very familiar with the with these uh, products. Um, Thailand and Philippines are the only two uh, essential Asian suppliers, but they are supplying dry mangoes. Um, the other suppliers uh, in Asian suppliers in particular um, um, uh, in Pakistan, India, and uh, uh, Vietnam, they are not entering uh, the uh, modern retail, but they are focusing on the ethnic market. So their communities are happy to uh, buy their mangoes with their, which where they are familiar. The main varieties in um, in US are still Ataulfo from Mexico, Francis Keith. Kent and Tommy Atkins. Uh, there is a, something important and interesting. Uh, consumers are much more um, aware about um, the organic aspect of the food they're eating 
And the organic mangoes are increasingly, um, the increasingly uh, sold by consumers. So uh, this is something that Mexico in particular, they have already uh, received and they are adapting their production to supply uh, organic mangoes. Um, a initial consideration that I would like then to share with the others, I think that with the uh, additional transportation costs that we are seeing in uh, these months, it's very difficult that Vietnamese uh, mango can compete uh, with the much closer suppliers, uh, particularly in the modern retail segment, which is the largest, which is the most important in terms of volumes. Um, so uh, it's advisable to focus on a large Vietnamese community uh, for the fresh mangoes and explore opportunity for processed mango, uh, following the example of Thailand and Philippines. I think that in the other um, in the other presentation, the largest one, the larger one, I also uh, put some photos of, taken uh, recently in August in California in some supermarkets, modern retails, where you can see that mangoes from uh, Mexico are sold less than a dollar per piece. So it's, uh, I think uh, it's rather difficult to compete with that kind of uh, production and price. Well, European market. I think that uh, we have to consider European market as an organization of, or an aggregation of different markets. Behavior, uh, food behavior, consumption behavior in UK, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Holland are completely different from the behavior of consumers in Portugal, Spain, France, Italy, Greece, and so on. So when we approach the uh, European market. We have to think of that is have an holistic approach and think of that each each country, each market has a difference, a substantial difference. Not only uh, the uh, sorry. Uh, well, there was a problem with this, uh, um, and so on. Let me put this. Okay. There are stringent technical and quality standards in the um, adopted by generally by the uh, European community. But each country is free to uh, make a, a str more stringent uh, like um, um, control for food safety, like uh, Germany, Austria, Belgium, they have um, different criteria and stricter criteria for um, minimum uh, maximum level of chemical levels, um, appearance, of infestation, and so on. Uh, going to the suppliers, uh, Brazil, Peru, Mexico, and they have the leading role in the European market. Um, followed by the Dominican Republic, Ivory Coast, Senegal, and then Spain, where we have a production of about 30,000 30, tons per year. And then Indian Pakistan, but again, like in US, Indian Pakistan mangoes are not present in the modern retails. Uh, they prefer to, um, to address the uh, ethnic markets, so they go to specific markets for the communities. The main importers were the Netherlands, but again, the Netherlands imp is importing uh, a large quantity, but um, they are re-exporting uh, large quantity also to different European markets. Then Germany, UK, Spain, France, and Portugal. I think I gave all the uh, data in my uh, larger presentation. Uh, so if we uh, aggregate the total import of different countries, uh, we reach 720,000 tons. But actually, we have to split the import and the re-export. So uh, Netherlands and Spain, Portugal, Germany, France and Belgium, they are re-exporting. So the real consumption in Europe, would you say, is something around 360,000 tons, 69,000 tons. Uh, but we don't know exactly uh, how much was the waste last year of the tropical fruit, including mango. So. 
it's rather difficult to assess the real market in terms of consumption. And unfortunately, um, there are uh, information, different information from different countries. So putting together the market is quite rather difficult. Anyway, uh, Europe remains the second largest and important market, even considering import and re-export. There are limited local production that we have to think in, uh, take into consideration because tomorrow they will be uh, um, a direct competitors with uh, zero distance from the consumers. Spain, Portugal, and more recently Italy. In Sicily, they start the production of mango. Um, again, uh, always considering the difficulty in transportation, the shelf life, short shelf life of this product, I think that, again, for the time being, in the short period, it will be very difficult for a Vietnamese exporter to compete with uh, um, Central America, Latin America, West Africa, well-established uh, suppliers. So I would say that it's advisable to uh, focus more the large Vietnamese community in different and different markets and expand opportunity for processed mango. Uh, in this respect, I think uh, that we have to spend a few words about the um, processed mango that I started putting together, the dried and the mango puree. Uh, let me clarify that there are no specific um, data about this product. So, so the information and the data collected from industries and surveys conducted by different agencies. The, the size of the dried mango market in Europe is something between 6,500 6, and 7,000 tons. <clears throat> Sorry. 75% uh, of this market is represented by dried mangoes, 20% by organic, and only 5% by sweetened uh, mangoes. The reason is uh, organic is growing in terms of attention by the consumers. There is a, a, a kind of, um, a, I would say, aversion towards added, um, added sugar. So it's difficult to say we go ahead. Uh, the natural dry are more uh, favored, uh, no added sugar, and more recently, organic preference. Who are the main end users? Um, companies producing snack and dried fruit mixture, breakfast cereals, retail brands, and also loose um, packaging in, super, in modern retails. The main importers are UK, Germany, France, Netherlands, Switzerland, and Italy. Those are uh, some of the brands, most popular brands at the moment in Europe. Um, in, you can easily find in all the main supermarkets these uh, particular brands. The mango puree markets eh, has grown stably. Um, smoothies are becoming very popular. I would say that the um, size of the market is something between 100 and 110,000 tons, uh, out of which 90, uh, 80, 90,000 tons are coming from India. The rest comes from Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, Peru, and Ecuador. There are strictly safety requirements about MRL, uh, microbiological, uh, labeling, name, lot, number, and producer details. Also, the packaging requirements, safety bags in drums or small cans, are strictly defined by European legislation. Um, who are the end user for these products? Uh, beverage and day industries, bakery and confectionery, fruit snacks and bars, jams and preservatives, sauce and condiments, and infant food with a preference for organic uh, mangoes. Bias profiles, well, we have to address mainly the specialist fruit ingredients uh, companies, and those are importers or agents, or, and therefore the food industries, the retails, and the food services. Here, I briefly uh, mention the association of the uh, official association of the European traders in dry fruit and processed fruit and some of the companies that are members of the uh, this association and now we come to the uh, main 
main uh, matter of this presentation, the Chinese market. Um, well, it's still the third global import market. Um, despite the fact that they are producing 2.5 million tons, from mainly from Hainan, um, China cannot meet the internal demand. So the import is growing and will continue to grow. Uh, at the moment, the main suppliers officially are Thailand, but basically for mangosteen, then Vietnam, um, the majority to the cross-border trade, Indonesia, Taiwan, Malaysia. Uh, we notice Peru very aggressive policy, uh, market policy, and Australia. Uh, there are new countries which we, we need to take uh, uh, to under, under the radar and control. One is Myanmar, which are exporting 25 to 30,000 tons. Cambodia, who recently uh, uh, started exporting officially, and not only through uh, Vietnam, um, and Pakistan. Pakistan in particular is important because they are starting uh, with agreements with companies dealing basically in e-commerce. So it's the uh, segment that I would like to recommend to be taken into consideration. Uh, interestingly, in 2020, China started recording import from Vietnam, which was recorded by Vietnam, uh, Vietnam authorities, but not from China. Um, let's have a look on the Vietnamese exporting. Um, there are some pros, uh, which, for example, it's a lucrative commodity for the Chinese buyer. Uh, there is, a, has developed a strong uh, sourcing experience. Um, the exporters are able, are capable to manage large volume, and the proximity is the same proximity that Mexico is enjoying with the US and Vietnam is enjoying with, with large market. But there are also cons. First of all, the exporters, the majority of the exporters, with some exception, of course, they have, have a limited knowledge of the, of the market. Unfortunately, so far, there was no effort to build brand origin, so very often the um, Vietnamese mango are confused in the shells with other origin. Um, there is a lack of information towards the uh, supply chain, so there is no possibility for the suppliers, for the farmers, collectors, packhouses, to learn what, what is happening in the market and, uh, and adjust their behavior. And oh, so far, the main destination of the Vietnamese mango is uh, the traditional outlets and the uh, wet market. So we need a strong shifting in the strategy First of all, brand building, then focus on modern retails, bypassing the importers, the buyers at the border, and dealing directly with the distributors of the modern retail, and address the e-commerce segment, which is very important at the moment. So uh, golden opportunity are tier one, tier two, and tier three cities, e-commerce. And we have to recall that Chinese consumers are more confident towards imported tropical fruit. So because of the quality, because of the standards, because of the perception. So we need to address the consumers of the modern distribution. Um, Korean market is a, a traditional, has been a traditional market for uh, uh, the export from Vietnam. It's a small, uh, 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 there is a small uh, but very expensive local production which doesn't make any competition with the uh, Vietnamese mango. The market size um, shrunk a little bit last year, passing uh, into 70,041, 47 tons, uh, with minus 7.5%. Uh, there are stringent requirements that the um, uh, exporters has to comply with, uh, with the assistance of the importers. The main suppliers are still Thailand, Peru, and this is a, a uh, I would like to recall that Peru, again, is very aggressive in terms of uh, market entry. They are sending uh, the initial, at the initial beginning of the campaign, they are sending by plane, following by uh, sea shipment, and a lot of attention to um, appearance, a lot of attention to packaging, so Peru is something important. Uh, Philippines uh, is going down, but Vietnam is going up, uh, as I saw in the other presentation, and uh, 
That is an encouraging aspect. Taiwan is going down. Brazil, Australia are stable. Um, the preference of the consumers is basically appearance. The mango has to be beautiful. Uh, the packaging, the skin colors, no defects. Uh, consumers in Korea and Japan, they prefer sweet instead of sour mango. Uh, they are therefore mango with high bricks, sugar bricks are more uh, successful. Um, it's important to understand that the uh, mango, the tropical fruit, is something important in Korean and Japanese culture, not only because uh, they are expensive, but because they are related to the culture of the country and very often are used as a gift. So presentation, appearance is extremely important. I mentioned the Japanese market, even if it's as much smaller than Korean, for the simple reason. The stringent requirements are more or less the same with the <clears throat> different uh, the treatment at the origin, but uh, it's a market which is, uh, the consumer co uh, um, preference are reflecting exactly the Korean consumer expense. So once we have a product suitable for Korean consumers, Korean market, that product can be easily um, utilized in the Japanese market. Um, the Emirates market is uh, completely different. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> it's much larger, uh, 69,000 tons, and last year there was a decrease uh, shrinking in the size. Uh, the two leaders in exporting are Pakistan and India. Uh, the, reasons are, the reasons are different, but basically <coughs> the presence of large communities of workers in the country. Um, the third one is Egypt, then Vietnam, who is, um, has been uh, performing quite well. Uh, but last year there was a decrease of 32% for COVID reasons and less consumption in the country, Kenya and South Africa. Uh, the level of requirements are medium and the, we need to understand the, the market in terms of high polarization. There, was, there is a larger market which is represented by uh, medium low income and of course this is uh, represented by wet markets uh, and uh, unspecialized shops and then there is a, a modern retail which is uh, more uh, focused on quality in line with the healthy eating and this is preferred by the large community of expatriates with high, medium high income so I think that the strategy should be uh, addressing the modern retail with a product, quality product, not competing only with price with Pakistan and India and Egypt, because that uh, is a, will relegate the quantity, the quantity of export into uh, the actual volume. Australian market. Um, it's an interesting market because, first of all, there, are, there is a, a, an important production. Last year, 72,000 tons, which was a record production. Well, Australia depends on years export seven eight thousand uh, tons uh, but the import is very limited one thousand tons mainly from Thailand Vietnam Brazil and Mexico but it's an interesting window because um, if the exporters can comply with the stringent requirements uh, there is an off-season windows which goes from March to August where uh, Vietnamese exporter can play an important role with a quality product uh, following a uh, two folds or two steps strategy. First, starting with specialized tropical uh, shops, uh, creating, building the image of a quality product, and then um, I will say activate the interest of the uh, buyers or larger. Uh, chain of supermarkets, modern retail, to increase the volume. Um, Vietnam, uh, man Vietnamese mango is not very popular at the moment, so again, um, the expansion in these countries requires a specific promotional campaign. Uh, and here, briefly, um, some consideration about the export. Uh, definitely, in the last six, five, seven years, um, the expo volume progressed increasingly, and that was um, interesting, with the exception of last year. So, 
uh, the export unfortunately was concentrated on the uh, I would say easy easy going business in China uh, for different reasons that everybody knows logistical proximity not stringent uh, controls and so on but this um, has created a double situation again pros and cons on the one hand uh, the, there was a, a development of the export machine uh, was quite important, uh, which involved uh, farmers, transporters, pack houses, service providers for treatment and export. The chain, the machine is today able to meet any Chinese buyer's request with a large quantity and almost all year round. But on the other hand, uh, that slowed down the production improvement process from farmers to exporters. I mean, has limited the dissemination of best practices to comply with the requirements of other more remunerative markets, where the buyers, the distributors, and the final consumers pay close attention to food safety aspects, appearance, aroma, texture, and definitely also the price. Um, the remaining 5% export goes to Russia, uh, Emirates, Dubai in particular, USA, South Korea. The quantity exported in other markets like Lithuania, Australia, Hong Kong are very limited. So this absence from remunerated markets has um, facilitated, favor the um, control of the market share by more aggressive export policy uh, from other countries, other producers. And they have occupied stably uh, profitable shares in these markets, in particular in the European market. So uh, I think that it will be very difficult for the exporters at the moment to enter these markets where they have been absent in terms of large uh, share without the support of um, the government and the institution for the promotion of the export. So there will be the need of uh, establishing specific promotional campaign to support the creation of the image, the, uh, the, the brand of uh, Vietnam, Vietnamese mango as a quality product. And with this, I leave to the, the floor to the others. And sorry, I am afraid I was a little bit longer than expected. Thank you. Cảm ơn. Thank you, Bruno. Cảm ơn uh, ông Bruno đã có một cái bài trình bày.